All right, good morning. I'm trying a new camera angle for this go live and also so I can see any comments that come up while we're baking. So this will be an interesting view for me and you before I get started with our um, cherry almond muffins. Today is National Muffin Day. So I thought this would be a great excuse to make some goodies to bring into school. I've got my oven heating up to 350 degrees so that it's hot and ready for when I'm ready to put those muffins in the oven. And I'm going to show you guys a couple other of my baking tips that I do for like my pantry to keep it organized um, before I get into the muffin mixture. All right, well, one of the kitchen tips I want to talk to you guys about is I keep my flour, sugar, rice, confectioner sugar, a um, couple other things in these clear containers that have the locking lids. They're not by Pampered Chef. They're just, you know, you can get them anywhere. Um, the reason I really like them is because you can see how much product you have left. So in this case, I have not very much flour left. But rather than just dump a new bag of flour in here, I'm going to take my existing flour and dump it into a bowl because this is the oldest flour. So I want that to get used up first. Then I'll dump in my fresh bag of flour to here. So this is the newest flour. And now it'll be on the bottom. And then I'll dump the old flour on top and that'll make sure that the flour gets used in the correct order. If you just keep dumping flour on top of flour, you'll always have old flour in the bottom. There we go. So that's a five pound bag of flour fits right in there. And I'm gonna use up the flour in the bowl first. We'll just, I'm not even gonna dump it back in because I know I'm gonna need it for today. So I am gonna make the topping, the streusel topping for the muffins first. So let's see, we need another bowl for that. Smaller bowl. There we go. And I'm gonna do a third a cup of flour for our streusel topping. So when I measure flour, I just have it nice and light and fluffy and I scoop and just shake off. That's a third a cup right there. And we're also going to do a quarter cup of regular sugar, white sugar, and three tablespoons, well, an eighth a cup, that's only two tablespoons, of brown sugar. I do have an eighth a cup measure. And when you measure brown sugar, you wanna make sure it's packed in there. If you don't have brown sugar, you can make your own. It's just white sugar mixed with molasses. Tons of recipes on the internet for that. So that's two tablespoons or an eighth of a cup of brown sugar. And we're going to do, of course, a big pinch of salt. Anytime you have sweet stuff, you need to have salt in it as well. There we go. And we're gonna do some butter. So this butter is a little bit colder. I have a stick of butter that I brought out maybe like half an hour ago, softening up for the muffins themselves, but this I just took out of the fridge. And it's gonna be a little colder, and that's for our streusel topping. We're gonna to cut it into the butter, and I'm just gonna use my fingers to do that. Um, but we need three tablespoons. Let's see here, one, two, three. And I'm going to, you guys can't see what I'm doing. Um, when I cut this butter, so there's my three tablespoon hunk, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this into one tablespoon pieces, and I'm gonna cube these up smaller just to help them distribute into the flour sugar mixture better. So this is gonna give me 12 little squares of butter. So I cut them into like little cubes. In they go. All right, and I'm just gonna use my fingers. I'm gonna do like a rubbing motion and rub the flour, sugar, two types of sugars and salt together. And it's gonna form like sand. So I'm just, again, I'm like 
pushing my thumb against my fingers. If you had a pastry cutter, you could use that. You could use two knives and like a scissoring motion back and forth. I just like getting my hands in there and doing it. Plus it's one less dish you have to wash later. That's always nice. And I mentioned I have the oven on 350, so I want my oven to preheat for like a good 15, 20 minutes. Your oven can have hot spots in it and there's a little sensor inside it. And just because the little sensor reaches 350, it doesn't mean that your entire oven is at 350. So I like to give it a good preheat and your baked goods will just come out so much better for it. The other reason to preheat your oven is you want it hot and ready for you. So when you start mixing all of your ingredients together, you're activating them. So to get the tallest, fluffiest muffins, you want to bake that batter super fast. Um, so if you have to wait for your oven to heat up, you're going to lose some of that leavening from your muffins while you're waiting. So just have everything hot and ready for you. All right, this is looking nice and streusely. So again, it's like um, sand, a little bit bigger than sand. The butter, some of the butter is in bigger pieces and that's fine. But this is what the consistency that I like for a streusel topping. If you squeeze it, see how it stays together? So it's moist. We don't want dry on top of our muffins. We want delicious on top of our muffins. So there we go. All right, I'm just gonna set that off to the side. And then we can work on our muffin base. All right, so I'm using a stand mixer today. So much easier than trying to mix things by hand. But if you have a hand mixer, that's a great thing to use too. Let me just wash my hands real quick. They've got a little too much goo on them. All right, so for our base, we're gonna do half a cup of butter, which is one stick, eight tablespoons, and we're gonna cream that with, oh, let's see here. There should be some sugar. One, a generous one cup. So this recipe that I'm following is from $100 a month. I don't know, found on the internet, we're giving it a try. Where did my pumpkin go? There we go. Um, yeah, we're just gonna give it a try. So one stick of butter, creaming that. I'd say one of the biggest mistakes in baking is not creaming your butter and sugar enough. You want to really, 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 really mix that and get, let's see, we need a one cup measure, um, and fully incorporate the sugar into the butter. So we're doing a cup plus an eighth of a cup, a random measurement, but again, following the recipe and we're just going to go with it. So a little slow to begin with just to get the butter and sugar combined together, and then you can keep increasing the speed. There we go. I'm gonna let that go for like a minute. So right now would be a good time to prepare your muffin tins. I'm using just Reynolds white baking liners. And my muffin tin here. Um, this is so non-stick, you don't even need muffin liners, but I'm bringing these to school for a treat. So I'm gonna have them individually you know, wrapped and it'll make it just easier for people to pick them up and take them with them. 
The recipe says it makes 16. I'm going to try to get 18 out of this. All right, I'm going to scrape down the sides of the butter and sugar, making sure that I get all the way to the bottom. So if you need to lower your bowl and scoop right around that, you know, the divot that comes up in the bottom here, make sure you're scraping all around that. Get the sides. And then I'm going to let it go again for another, I don't know, 30 seconds or so and really get that incorporated. I got this stand mixer when I was just out of college. I remember buying it at Macy's in Long Island. They had a sale. And I was actually living in... Ooh, water spring out. I was living in my grandparents' um, property. They had like two houses next to each other. And I was living there working as a caterer. And I remember my grandma saying to me like, don't buy a mixer, honey. You know, I'll get you one when you get married. And I'm like... But what if I never get married? I just want to be able to bake now. And so I went to Macy's and got myself this when it was on sale. Oh my gosh, guys, this is like 2002, 2003. So this mixer has lasted me a long time. Yay, KitchenAid. All right, so when I say cream these together, so here's what the butter and sugar looks like. And it's a lot lighter than the stick of butter. So there's a stick of butter, there's this. Well, on camera it doesn't look a lot lighter, but I promise you in person, you know, it's much paler. So that's what you want. All right, we're gonna incorporate, I'm always making a mess of myself, where are my paper towels? There we go. So now we're gonna incorporate two eggs. One, um, a lot, oh no. A lot of recipes are like incorporate one at a time. I'm always like, oh my God, let's get this show on the road. So there's, I just chuck in both. Measuring in general is not my forte. I typically like cooking better for that reason. Cause I can throw things in, taste it as I go. With baking, it's a lot harder to that. I kind of just cross my fingers and hope, you know, it comes out great. Our batter is beautiful color. Those yolks are going to turn it nice and yellow again. I'm scraping down and again getting right around that bump that in the bottom there. And there we go. All right, give that one more little mix. Awesome. All right, so we have butter, egg, sugar in here, and now we're gonna move on to our dry ingredients. So we're gonna do three cups of flour, three teaspoons of baking powder, which, yay math, three teaspoons is really just one tablespoon. So don't measure three different times. That's gonna lead to inaccuracy. You wanna just have one measure and be done with it. So one tablespoon of baking powder. Three cups of flour. Of course, a big pinch of salt. Let's just do the salt right now. All right, so three cup. There's my one cup measure. So again, for the flour, fluff it up and then shake it off. So one. Not quite two, but now we'll move on back to our brand new flour in the container. Shake it level. There's two. And 
three. So the salt, the flour, we're gonna do our tablespoon of baking powder. So this is the leavening agent for your muffins. This is what's gonna make them rise up. So if you uh, cook a lot with um, cake mixes and do like those puddings to make them extra moist, always add like a half or a full teaspoon of baking powder when you do that. Um, the extra moisture from the pudding mix or sour cream is a great addition. Is going to make your cake a little heavy. So the trade-off from moisture is it's a little heavier. Add half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of baking powder and that will give it that extra leavening and help it rise up and be a little less dense. Actually, Erin, Erin and I have traded some cake mix pudding recipes. All right, let's gently incorporate this. And we're going to be drizzling in one cup of milk. I have whole milk. I don't think it really matters, honestly, what type of milk you use. Um, and we're also going to be adding in vanilla. I challenge you if you are a baker, get the Pampered Chef vanilla and then tell me how much of a difference you can taste. It's crazy. The vanilla in here is like so vanilla-y. It's delicious. All right, we're gonna do, oh, let's do like a teaspoon of each. Well, almond's pretty strong, so maybe not that crazy. But definitely a teaspoon of vanilla, yum. And I think, well, it is making a lot of muffins. And it's going in the batter. We'll do a teaspoon of almond as well. Yum O. Oh. So cherry and almond is like a classic combination. All right, delish. All right, so now I'm going to have my mixer on low and I'm just going to drizzle this in and that's going to help incorporate the flour into our butter egg sugar mixture. That looks great. All right, I'm staying on low because I don't want to overdevelop the gluten in the flour by beating it really high. And we need to do a quick scrape down. Ooh, this, oh my goodness, yikes. That smells, the almond extract smells so good. If you don't like almond, don't use it. Just do like two teaspoons of vanilla in that case. No problem. If you want to turn this into blueberry muffins with a streusel topping, um, use the same recipe. Just do the two teaspoons of vanilla, and then you'll fold in blueberries instead of the cherries that I'm going to use. All right. Again, we don't want to overmix, so... That's not mixing, that part right there, I just do at the end to try to get some of this off my paddle. So let's put this out of the way, flour out of the way. All right, let's clean off this paddle. And then we're gonna fold in, so this is what intrigued me about this recipe that I found on the internet. Um, the author of it takes a can of cherry pie filling and actually dumps it in a colander and washes like the gel part off so that you just have the cherries. I'm like, ooh, I can get behind this. Because one, I don't want to pit cherries, like hello, that's a pain in the kachukas. And cherry pie filling is readily available. It's often, you know, you can get it on sale. There's lots of different brands to choose from. This one today I happen to go with Comstock. I've used Lucky Leaf in the past. Um, what's the brand at Aldi? I've definitely seen pie filling there. Aldi's fantastic. So yeah, whatever brand, you know, you enjoy. All right, let's get this out of the way. Mm. All right, so I'm just doing a, one last final scrape and, all right, where'd I put those cherries? Over here out of the way. So these have been that's the filling that was uh, rinsed off and drained. 
and we're gonna fold that right in. Actually, you know what? They are like a little wet, so I lied. I'm going to first dry them a tiny bit on some paper towel because I don't want gooey, like gummy pockets in the muffins. I want the cherry flavor, the almond. Oh, you know what I think I might do is get some almonds from my pantry and sprinkle those on top. Ooh, that sounds really good. So let's dry these cherries off a little better. I did drain them in the colander, but as they sat, a little more liquid came out of them. So there we go. That's looking better. Spread them out, get some of that liquid off of them. All right, now I'm putting the cherries in. And there we go. You know what, I might just fold the almonds into the batter. Maybe I'll do that. Let's see what I've got in my pantry. Um, flaked almonds, so I'm just gonna put like, I don't know, a big handful, which is probably a third or a half of a cup, right in there with the cherries. I don't know what's gonna happen. We're living dangerously today, guys. All right, let's fold all that in. And then the last step is just using a cookie scoop to evenly divide the batter among our cupcake wells and topping it with the streusel topping. Then I'll have to go on this person's website and give their muffins a rating. So my technique for folding these cherries and almonds in is I do like a sweep around the side and then I go into the middle and cut down. And then lift the batter up, cut down through the middle, lift the batter up. So it's a folding technique rather than a stirring technique. Whew, this is a thick batter. My arm is getting worn out. So that's, we're gonna call it good enough better. So again, this recipe says it makes 16. I'm going to try, I put 18 out. I don't like overfilling the wells and then having it um, like ooze out onto the sides of the pan and then you're trying to lift it up. So I'm going to just do maybe a little bit smaller than typically I would, especially because we're going to put some streusel topping on these. So this is the large scoop. I love it. I use it for meatballs, for portioning, it just makes things so much quicker and easier, you know, because it's got the lever inside, so it scoops the batter right out for you. Ooh, cannot wait to try these. Now, I'm pretty sure they also sell cherries, just like in juice in a jar, like not as pie filling. So if you could find that, that would be a wonderful substitution or just, I mean, they're basically, once you rinse off the jelly part of the pie filling, you know, they're pretty much the same thing. So why not just find those? I was doing my shopping at the smaller Wegmans around here, um, so a little less variety in the products. But if you went to big Wegmans, or if you don't have Wegmans by you, if you went to, oh, my mom shops at Tops in Cortland, and she's able to find all sorts of things, so they have a pretty good selection. Ooh, guys, I think I might even be able to get more than 18 out of this. Because that's 17. There's 18 right there, and I still have some batter left. Let's do two more cups and see if that one two let's see if that's enough and I have to say I'm really happy with how well the cherries distributed throughout the batter so a lot of times your fruit and your chocolate chips and things like that can sink to the bottom but I'm looking at these muffins and I'm seeing cherries sticking out all over the place. So, excellent. All right, I'm just gonna scrape 
It doesn't ever look like there's much batter left, but when you get in there and you really scrape it out, you're like, ooh, that might even be enough for another muffin. But I'm just going to add it to, that one looks a little small. There's another one that maybe could just use a touch more. That one maybe could use a touch more. They're all pretty uniform, so it's not like any one looks but very small. All right, good enough, right? There we go. All right, so now we can sprinkle our topping. So we made this earlier. It's just flour, sugar, brown sugar, and butter. Sprinkle that right on the tops of these. And if I don't use all the streusel topping, I'm okay with that. Because, again, I don't want it oozing out onto my baking pan and making things a mess. Once these come out of the oven and have cooled off, I'm going to drizzle them with a glaze that I make from powdered sugar, um, cream or milk, and a little more um, almond extract in it. And again, if you don't like almond extract, just use vanilla. Or if you enjoy the taste of confectioner's sugar, don't even add any extract to it. Just do the straight confectioner's sugar and um, a little milk or cream to thin it. I like using cream. I always have heavy cream in my refrigerator. I use it for to, um, my savory cooking when I've got a sauce, something that just needs like a little extra finishing. Um, I make a lot of like homemade dips and dressings, so I'll use heavy cream in those. All right, and actually I am using, because I got those two extra, well what I say, she had 16 and I ended up making 20. So I am using all the streusel topping. All right, these are gonna go into a 350 degree oven. I'm not sure for how long. Typically muffins are like 25 minutes, so I'll just have to keep an eye on these. Um, her recipe says to cook them at 400. No, I'm not cooking muffins at 400 degrees. I'm going to do 350 and cross my fingers they come out. I've never baked a muffin at 400 degrees before, so I don't know if that's a typo or maybe it's something I need to learn. I don't know, but... All right, when these come out and they've cooled off, I'll take some pictures and post it in the group, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I'm sure I will see you again soon.